What's going on everybody? Josh here with Scrapyard Films and today I got another Vegas Pro tutorial for you. And in this one, we're gonna be talking about the best fixes you can perform so that your brand new Vegas Pro 20 can run the best it possibly can. Okay, so we're inside Vegas Pro 20 right here. Now the first thing I always do upon every new installation of Vegas Pro, I go to Options, go to Preferences, and then I go to the Video tab. And from here, I change the Dynamic RAM Preview. By default, it's on 5%, I believe. And then from there, I like to drag that up to about 50%. Now it all depends on how many resources your computer has, depending on how high this can go. And so anywhere between 50 and 75, which is the max it allows you to do, is a decent number. That usually gives Vegas a lot more resources to edit a lot of different heavy files, transitions, effects, things like that. Next thing is maximum number of rendering threads. By default, it's on 32. I believe you can change it up to 48. And the lowest you can have it also is one. Typically keeping it on 32 is fantastic, but if you have some sort of weird render issues, you can change it to one and then try re-rendering from that point on and see how that goes. I've had that fix some weird HEVC rendering issues that I've had before, but for the most part, I keep it on 32 and you probably can as well. Next is GPU acceleration of video processing. By default, this is usually off, and if you have a graphics card installed, if you click the drop-down menu, it will see the graphics card that you have installed, and you can select it, and it will utilize that to help you edit and process videos. Instead of it all relying on the CPU, it'll share the load with your graphics card. Now, if your Vegas is acting a little bit slow, by default, the thumbnails are set to all, and I like to change that to head to tail. That requires a lot less of Vegas to try to decipher and show you a video preview on your entire timeline for a specific clip you add. So if I put head to tail, I'll still know what clip it is, but it's not trying to fill in all that blank in the middle with extra videos and changes. Every time I split it, it just would lag up like that. So keeping it on head tail is great for me. Next, if we go over to the File I.O. tab, from here, I like to enable the MKV Reader, just because I use MKV files quite often when I'm editing, but that's optional for you, and it's experimental, because it doesn't actually accept all MKVs, because some MKVs are made in extremely weird ways that are incompatible. So by default, these two boxes are unchecked, Legacy Enable Legacy ABC and Enable Legacy HEVC. So when they're unchecked, Vegas is using its new method to decode footage, AVC and HEVC footage. By default, most things are actually starting to lean a little bit more towards HEVC, and you may experience some sort of weird glitches and errors with this specific codec, because it's not an easy codec to edit with. It's a great codec to save space and retain quality, but editing on it is usually a nightmare. So if you're having weird issues editing footage, you can try checking either of these, one of them, both of them, whichever one you want, depending on the type of footage you have. And that could help solve weird glitches and crashes. Now, enabling these legacy options does come with some drawbacks, meaning you won't be able to edit 10-bit footage you won't be able to edit some HEVC footage. And most of the time, that's all stuff that's default when you're recording on smartphones or things like that. So if you have these checked, you may see a lot of limited editing functionality, but it could be a little bit more stable. But if you have them unchecked, you'll be able to edit just about any kind of video file. And you may have just a little bit of instability depending on you know what your system is doing and what transitions and effects you have on. Down here, we have hardware decoder to use. If you select that, you want to make sure to choose your graphics card so it can help decode your footage faster than just relying on your CPU. So when you drag and drop a file onto your timeline, your graphics card is going to help decipher what that video file is, along with navigating, clicking back and forth, and playing videos on your timeline. Very helpful to have your graphics card here. Next, under Deprecated Features tab, I like to enable the QuickTime plugin and the Legacy Text. Those are the two I like right there for sure uh, because the QuickTime plugin allows you to play specific .mov files and I like the Legacy Text option compared to the New Text option, just personal preference right there. You don't have to. But enabling the QuickTime plugin can help Vegas edit MOV files better. Now on over to the General tab, if we scroll down to the very bottom, we will see Enable Automatic Effects Window Resizing. 
by default that is enabled and that allows your window for your effects to change depending on which plugin you have and which effect you're using because some are bigger than others. But if you ever see your windows like go off screen or kind of glitch out, you know, pretty weird like that, you can uncheck this and hit apply and see if that makes a difference for you, which it has for me in the past. But by default, keeping it on does help. But I just wanted to let you know that turning it off also can help if you're running into weird window resizing glitches. So we hit OK. Now if you hold Shift and then left click Options, we'll see the internal tab appear. We'll select that. And then from here, if we hit, type in open CL forward slash GL enter op, by default, this is true, but I like to change this to false because when it's false, I get a lot less glitches and errors when it comes to transitions and anything using OpenCL and GL functionality, which I believe Vegas is going to be getting rid of that in the future. Next thing you could do is search for GPU acceleration for Windows Presentation Foundation panels. Now this one by default is true and you can change it to false if you're having some sort of weird window resizing glitches. I've seen that fix it before, but by default, this being untrue is good to have, but changing it to false can be a good troubleshooting step if you're having any kind of weird glitches and when you load up transitions, effects, things like that. And lastly, as a little bonus, if we go to options and go to preferences, we can go to audio device and then by default, the playback buffering and track buffering are set to a pretty low amount way over here to the left. I've found that if you maximize those out to one and two and then hit apply, I've noticed that that helps Vegas run better and longer before it starts getting sluggish on me in my personal experience using this. So I recommend doing that, but if you start to see weird audio errors, you can flip those back to default and you should be good to go at that point. And for the final method, if we close Vegas and we hold Control and Shift, then double click the desktop icon, then we'll see a Vegas Pro prompt pop up and it'll say, do you want to reset Vegas to all its factory default values? You can say yes, but in order to fix a lot of thumbnail glitches and a bunch of other weird stuff, especially when upgrading from older versions and older builds to newer builds, you definitely want to check delete all cached application data, then hit yes. Then after that, Vegas Pro is going to completely factory erase itself and then you can start fresh and that fixes just about all the rest of the errors that you get in this program. But those are my tips and tricks on how to make Vegas run better and more effectively for you. And if this video helped you out, be sure to shoot a like and subscribe down there because that'll really help me out. I'll see you guys in the next video.